You're listening to EFT Radio Online, where we explore meridian tapping techniques for self-help and peak performance. By listening to this audio, you agree to the disclaimer located at eftradioonline.com forward slash disclaimer. If you'd like to get the schedule of all the upcoming EFT radio shows and access to archive shows, please visit us at eftradioonline.com where you can subscribe to our free newsletter. Are you a savvy, successful single looking to manifest your soulmate? Are you stuck repeating the same kind of unsatisfactory relationship over and over? What if you could stop struggling to find love and just be love so that your soulmate comes to you? Welcome to Manifest Your Soulmate with EFT, where you'll discover how to unleash the power of your mind to attract the love of your life. Your host is Dr. Annette Valancourt, author, master manifester, and the elite soulmate coach. Hi, beloveds, and welcome to another episode of Manifest Your Soulmate with EFT. I'm Dr. Annette Valancourt, the Elite Soulmate Coach. In today's show, you're going to hear from my guest, Carol, who has been on the show before, approximately six weeks ago, and we're going to tune in to a middle of a discussion that she and I were having about the fears that block love from coming into your life. Now, Carol is relatively new to EFT. I think she first learned it. Uh, from reading my book back in January and then has been using it on and off uh, in a daily practice. Since first being on the show about six weeks ago, she manifested a new relationship. It's only about three weeks old at this point and she's really taking it slow and considering whether or not this is someone that she wants to become romantically involved with. She confided in me earlier in the day that one of the fears that she has about a new relationship is the fear of settling. She noted, and you'll hear her talk about this later in the show, that she settled for her first husband, uh, who turned out to be an abuser, and after she divorced him, she feels like she settled for her second husband, whom she came to love greatly and was married to for 32 years, but that because of her beliefs that no man would want a woman and her child, she quickly married him. You'll hear her talk about her role in her family as the good daughter and the giver because she grew up with her father who was sick and ailing most of her childhood life. I think he passed away when she was 18. And you'll notice the point at which she exclaims for the first time in her life that she likes herself and how this brings her to tears. So we go in and we use EFT tapping uh, with some techniques from Matrix re-imprinting to help her go back and heal that five-year-old child inside of herself who thought that she needed to earn love. I'm sure there are many of you out there that feel a similar way, grew up being a good son or a good daughter, and thinking that you had to earn love through being helpful. I know that I can really relate to that in my own life, having been the third of nine children and the oldest daughter. So when we get to that point where we start tapping, I invite you to tap along with us, even though this may not be your exact issue and you may have a different experience, you can always benefit by tapping along with us during EFT. And in a minute, you'll hear us start our conversation about fears and then about mm, 20 minutes or so into it uh, is where there's a real revelation for Carol and we go back and do the healing work on her five-year-old child. Here's what readers are saying about how to manifest your soulmate with EFT by Dr. Annette Valancourt, the elite soulmate coach. This amazingly powerful 
powerful book speaks to the soul. Annette is relatable and really gets it on a level that is so reassuring and hopeful. She describes the tapping process better than any I've seen. The menus woven throughout the book are sheer genius, offering a customizable process that is sure to uncover and release any block holding you back. There's so much gold in this book, it goes way beyond manifesting your soulmate. It gives the reader the tools to manifest whatever it is they truly desire in their life. Marcy Trailer, Professional Empowerment Coach. Now available on Amazon.com or at EliteSoulmateCoaching.com. I also wanted to announce that for a limited time only, you can get a free PDF of my entire book, How to Manifest Your Soulmate with EFT, Relationship as a Spiritual Path. This is my gift to you for signing up to The Love Nest, my email newsletter, in which you will receive regular soulmate success tips. All you have to do to get your instant access to this book is go to my website, EliteSoulmateCoaching.com, and enter your email, and you will get instant access to the entire book. Oh, where do you want me to start? <laughs> Well, how about what you just texted me? Oh my, I was just um, I was just FaceTiming with my oldest son, and as I was um, rereading the chapter because I've been studying that, so I just wanted to reread it, and I got to the point where it says the fear of settling for instead of shopping for the soulmate. In other words. Oh, that ain't it. Oh, where did I write it down? Fear is the belief in our powerlessness to change the bad things from the past happening again. And the other day when my son and I were talking, he says to me, I was telling him about my new relationship and, and how I'm taking it slow and, and I'm looking for any red flags that I'm right might signal something isn't quite right and and he says to me sounds like a good plan mom no reason to have to settle and that bothered me not a lot but it just stuck in the back of my mind and as I'm going through this and 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 thinking about the fear and it dawned on me that I had settled for my first husband because I was young and foolish and figured, oh, my gosh, you know, I, if you go to bed with somebody before you're married, you you got to marry them. Uh, and I didn't know. I could say no. So there was that fear of, oh, my gosh, i got to go through with this. Mm-hmm. And then my second husband, I'll call him Tom, Dick, and Harry, okay? So then when Dick came along, in some ways I was, settling there too which I had never thought of before because I had been a single mom for so long I just figured there would nobody else would out there would want the package you know the son and the and the woman you know Mm -hmm. and I think in some ways because we had a very short courtship I mean we met in May and we were married in August and now with with Harry you know, I, I know I'm older now and I am taking it slower, but I don't want to settle. Ah. I don't want you to settle either. No. And, and then it dawned on me that I don't have to. And even though in some ways, yes, I could see where I settled, but I don't think we ever get the perfect soulmate as far as you know, their hairline is perfect, you know, their eyebrows, their speech. Yeah, the outside doesn't doesn't yeah. count, though, in soulmate stuff. Okay. So the thing is then to, to look for the inside, get that out. But it was just like, wow, this just all, it came about, and, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, once you start using EFT, it's with you all the time, whether you 
you're aware of it or not, you know, having the open mind, it just, it's able to work immediately. Yeah, yeah. That's why I emphasize, and I, I'm realizing even more as I go through, you know, I'm in what, my eighth year of doing EFT, mm-hmm. of how it really needs to be a daily practice. I think sometimes in the EFT community, we're so used to these one-minute wonders mm-hmm. where we'll tap something away on a really complex issue, and relationships are always complex. So you're not going to tap one time of, my perfect soulmate comes to me easily in today or something like that and, and have it happen. Mm-hmm. There's all this past baggage yeah. and fears and beliefs that we really need to clear out. I know recently I was reminded about doing the personal peace process. I sat down the other day and wrote out all the things that I could remember just off the top of my head related to relationship stuff, whether it was sexuality or body image or past dating relationships. And I came up with pages and pages of stuff. And I thought, well, I better get started. (laughs) because I'm going to be here a while but that's you know part of the dedication and why I say in the book that a soulmate journey is not for the faint hearted because it really is a heroic (laughs) journey where you're having to face things that you've never even thought about or maybe you wanted to shove so far back in your mind that you don't even remember them Mm -hmm. and I don't look at at this this revelation just now of having to settle as anything bad mm-hmm. because, you know, Tom and Dick are in the past. Right. And I think in the course of life in between that, that goes on, you can see, I can understand where that's not a valid fear. It's something to be aware of. Mm-hmm because I was a different person back then. I was young and stupid, and then I got a little older and stupid, but this time, hopefully, (laughs) I'll graduate to knowledgeable. (laughs) Well, that's just the thing. I mean, we continue to evolve over our lifetime, and EFT speeds up the process. Oh, this whole EFT is, this is another new realm. This is another layer of the, the onion. This is another room in the castle of my life that just, okay, here, open, look at this door. Go through here. You don't have to stay, just look. Check it out. And it's like, wow. Yeah, and the thing that I'm experiencing, sort of being on the outside looking in as you talk to me about this, is that these are rooms you've not visited before. No, no, no. And, you know, and you think of... of the rooms that that we have locked away, those doors that are closed, we think of them as being fearful. And sometimes they're not. They're enlightening. Exactly. There used to be a comic strip called Bloom County, and it had a little penguin in it, a little kid named Binkley. There was one comic that I found particularly relevant to this, which was uh, Binkley, his little boy, standing uh, looking in a dark closet and he's got a baseball bat hidden behind his back, and he's got his hand on the doorknob. He's looking into the dark closet, and the caption says, Binkley confronts his fears. Oh. You know, he, he, but what I find, and maybe you can talk about this too, is what I find when I'm doing EFT on the things that I think, oh, my God, I can't even stand to think about this, is it's not fearful at all. And the EFT takes care of the fear. And then I have these amazing revelations come up with these solutions in my mind that I, I'm laughing myself silly <laughs> because I'm so delighted with the new revelation. Literally, I walked around laughing for hours, belly laughing so that my side hurt. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> when I realized I, what I was hanging on to and how long that was hurting me. Yes. Yes. I mean, it can be stuff that we don't even know why we're afraid. Exactly. You can, you can just have this feeling of fear tearing your body or whatever and go, what the heck is going on with me? Yeah. 
Yeah. And one of the things I love about tapping is you don't have to remember necessarily the thing that started at all. You can just start tapping about that feeling in your body. Mm-hmm. So it might be, even though I feel this tension in my shoulders or this dark, cold feeling in the pit of my stomach or this terror in my throat that's strangling me, you can start mm-hmm. tapping on those things. And you may or you may not recall the, the situation that started it, but if you can get that stuff calmed down, that's fine. You don't have to recall the memory every single time. It's nice if you can, but really what you're trying to get rid of is that feeling of, of fear, that paralyzing fear and terror. Mm-hmm. There's, so much yeah. mis- there's so much misinformation about what's normal, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to feel, fears about X, Y, and Z, getting hurt, being vulnerable, being abandoned, being attacked, being suffocated, being used, you know, those sorts of things that one 10 minutes worth of tapping isn't going to take care of all that and poof, your soulmate shows up. Mm-hmm. There's a freedom that I, I don't know what else. There's something different about me. I am not the same person I was even two years no. ago. You're, you're not the same person you were one year ago. No. And it's like this freedom, it's, it's almost like a, like a boxing match, and you know that you can beat that guy, you know, in the ring, and you want to just go, let's get at it, let's get it over with. And yeah. this, I think it's the power, the strength of knowing what EFT can do that, that gives you that ability to, to face it. You know, a lot of times I think we miss our soulmates because we're afraid to look. Yes, your soulmate doesn't live in your comfort zone. So when you're talking about settling, you're staying in your comfort zone. Yeah. I think the major thing for me is realizing that I can take on things that scare the bejesus out of me because I will tap it away before it gets paralyzing. Or, and on the, on the back end of that, if I take on something like a relationship and my feelings get hurt, rather than going, oh, this is a bad relationship, I tap that away. I tap away the feelings of hurt and I figure out what's underneath of it. Nine times out of ten, that person isn't deliberately out to hurt me. I've got old baggage that's being uncovered, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm upset. But I'm really, I'm really fascinated with this whole idea of this fear of settling that you're talking about today yeah. because I would bet my retirement <laughs> that you're not the only person that has felt that way and feels that way. Sometimes I'm talking to some of my single friends mm-hmm. and they say after a certain age, they'll say, you know, maybe I should just take Mr. Good enough because I'm afraid of being lonely or I'm afraid I'm going to, you know, not find anybody or they're not bad, uh-huh. but but they're not your soulmate. Hmm. I'm, my mind is just going to 90 miles an hour right now. Uh, yes. I just, yeah. Why do we have to settle for close enough? That's why I say, you know, EFT can help you bring to you exactly what your heart desires. Exactly? Mm-hmm. Hmm, maybe I better start putting down what is it I want. <laughs> I think a lot of people are afraid to think about exactly what they want. And again, not the superficial stuff, mm-hmm. not the, the three pages of he must be six foot three and a half and blue eyes <laughs> and have a D cup or whatever. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not a big believer in the list in terms of what you want from the other person. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in the list of what it is you want to give in a Ah. relationship. What does your soul need? What do you need to express? How do you need to grow? What's going to bring you into your fuller being? In other words, what's going to complete you? Yes. Okay, I'm, going, I'm writing that down because that's okay. that's a good question. What 
can someone else do to help me on this path? Right. Hmm. That's why the book's subtitle is Relationship as a Spiritual Path. Yeah. You know, this is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're serious about evolving as a spiritual being and being a channel of love into the world, this is the kind of work that you need to do. And you don't need to go to a convent or a monastery to be a spiritual person. You can do this in and through your relationship. All of them. Wow. I gotta read this book again. <laughs> I missed that part. Wow. Wow, that that just changed the whole outlook here. <laughs> what people are needing, and again this goes back to chapter one, what people are moving towards these days, survey survey says mm-hmm. people are becoming more spiritual and they're wanting more out of their relationships. We're moving past the notion of romantic love as a basis for marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I think we're maturing to the part where we realize <laughs> that, that that isn't what sustains us in a long-term relationship, that romantic love comes and goes. Right. You know, it's what gets us interested in, in another person right off the right. bat. And learning how to use your relationship as a vehicle or spiritual growth. It's a revolutionary idea, I think. Oh, That's definitely. My cousin and, and his wife, they've been married 42 years, 43 years, and they act like a young couple mm-hmm. because I truly, you can truly see that they are genuine soulmates. They don't feed off of each other. They feed each other. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. And, and they take whatever comes just, eh, you know. Well, I want to switch subjects a little bit. and We're still kind of so reminiscing. Okay. Kind of take you back. Since you've been on the show before, we did uh, some tapping on you being feeling a little guilty about moving on and wanting to share your life with someone else. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of walk us through what you remember about that episode and what happened right after that show? Wow, that seems like a long time ago. Yeah, um, met one of my old customers in the grocery store. You know, he said something about we should go to lunch. And I said, well, my number's in the book. And so far he hasn't called. But it, I think what it did for me at that, that moment gave me a confidence that I didn't even know I had. There's more courage there's confidence in who I am, and all of a sudden I'm I've completely changed from the "woe is me" girl to the "I like myself." <laughs> mm, right. I don't know if I want any anybody to share this right now or not. I'm just kind of reveling in myself, and I I like who I've become. I I had something happen over the weekend. I was visiting the cousins I mentioned, and. A friend of theirs came over, and and he was an older gentleman, but he was really sweet. And he he said, "Let me get a better look at you." And he turns me over, and he goes, "Oh my God, you're beautiful!" And it just, I, I'm hoping he saw the inside beauty. And I think that's what's coming out of me now. But now I there's a beauty there. I can feel it. There's a spirit there that's coming alive in me. I'm not so sure I want to share that. When you get to that point where you don't need a man, a woman to validate who you are or to make you feel loved, when you're in that middle of that self-love where you just go, you're pretty amazing. You said one time that this is what attracts people to you. Yes. I, I look back at high school and, and, and college and, and that, and the people that you always looked at were the people that were bubbly and and out there, and they weren't inhibited by what people thought. You know, they were doing good things. They were happy. Those are the ones that we're attracted to, and that is so right. And mm-hmm. I think to have that attraction, to be that attraction, 
you have to love yourself. I can honestly say I never had the ability to do that because I was so busy all my life helping and being the caregiver and being the wonderful, you know, helping daughters. And when you get to that point where you really get it at a deep level, that you love yourself, then not only do you become irresistible to other people, I've been telling you, you know, guys are going to start coming out of the woodwork at you, so get get ready. (laughs) (laughs) But also, you can much more easily both give and receive love because now you're full. You're not walking around like an empty well going, please love me, please love me, please love me. (laughs) Oh, my God, I remember those days. (laughs) You're saying, I got love to share. I'm good, and and I constantly refill my own well. You know what? Now, this is very superficial or, or very simple. I've noticed myself bouncing out to the mailbox. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not I'm not drudging along. I oh. I'm not walking with my head down. I'm bouncing. <laughs> Even oh. when there's bills in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are becoming a different person. You are, I love it. <laughs> you are not settling. You are not Oh, I just want taste. everybody to have a piece of this. <laughs> if yes. they could just taste it. I yes. mean, I wish it was a pan of brownies I could get everybody a piece. <laughs> you know, it's and, – and the thing is, is I'm not even worried when this bubble's going to burst because what if it don't? Exactly. We were talking earlier, and you were saying something about this fear of what, what if this isn't real. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. You know, I can't even bring I can't bring it to the surface. I'm I'm trying to to think about the negative part of that, and I can't even I I can't get to it. Is my recollection when we did the show, uh, the first show that you were on, which was, by the way, only six weeks ago? Are you kidding? No. Wow. Okay. Because you've changed so much in that amount of time. Okay, tell say that say that again. The fear. Let me see if I can recall. The, uh, <laughs> I just fear. okay. Well, the fear of this not being real, because my recollection, my experience of you on the show was that you were there to serve other people. You weren't there for yourself. Yes. When you got that guilt and that issue out of the way, your whole voice and manner changed, mm-hmm. and. And 15 minutes later, when you ran into your 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 old customer at the grocery store, and he asked, "That's oh, right, what? that's right," you were you were calling me saying, "This doesn't happen. This doesn't happen to me." And I'm like, <laughs> oh, "Yes, yes I, okay, now I remember. Yeah, because you know the whole my whole life up until this time has been the giver." be it the caregiver or the good daughter giver or whatever. You know, it's always been the giver. And up until that time, my life was spent thinking about the the nights that I spent crying into my pillow so that nobody would hear me. Mm -hmm. And I figured that we're not, I'm just not supposed to have this experience. This happens to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And... You're right, that day the lights went on and and whether, like I said, whether that guy ever calls again or not, I don't care because something clicked, something, there was a light that came on and I don't see it going out. Yeah, I love that. I love that. This is when you become your own soulmate. Oh, Oh, I'm hugging myself. I can give myself a hug. Oh. oh my God! Right. I like you, Carol. <laughs> uh, well, I oh God, I'm gonna say I, cry. I never thought I'd ever say that. Hmm. I never thought I'd ever say that. I want you to start tapping while you're talking about this, okay. as this emotion comes up, and just let this emotion flow, 
and tell me the story about why you thought you never would say this. So tap on your cry chat point. Yeah. And just tell me the story. Don't have to put it in any formal words, whatever. I think because as a child I was demonstrative and I was always told to, you know, keep it under control, suppress, suppress my joy, suppress my happiness. Now I have these belly laughs that I never had. Mm. <sighs> it's happened. And it's just, oh my, I have a smile. I can't even tap anymore. I'm, I'm tapping, but I can't. There's no okay. work. Oh, my gosh. It's like I earned this. Mm. I have a right to be happy because I was a good person. I'm a damn good caregiver. And somebody up there notices. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. I never thought I would ever get to this point. That I could be happy with myself. I was always doing what everybody else wanted. Be a good girl. You never know who knows you. Don't do crazy things. I can be myself and nobody's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hurt anybody. Oh, my. So let's go back to your karate chop point. Okay. And tap on, even though I had to cry in my pillow. Even though I had to cry in my pillow. And I had to dampen all my natural joy. And I had to dampen all my natural joy. Because those around me couldn't deal with it. Because those around me couldn't deal with it. I deeply love and accept myself now. I deeply love and accept myself now. Again, even though I had to cry in my pillow. Even though I had to cry in my pillow. And keep myself small and quiet. And keep myself small and quiet. I deeply love and accept myself now. I deeply love and accept myself now. Can you picture yourself as that little girl that was told to be quiet and be good and had to cry in the pillow? Oh, God, yeah. Okay. This is what I want you to do. While you continue to tap on your... This may get complex, so tell me if it, you, it's confusing. Imagine your, yourself as your grown-up self going back to be in the same room with that little girl that's crying in her pillow. Oh, God. Yep, I see her. Okay. okay. Tell her you're here to help her heal. And in your imagination, start tapping on her. <sighs> I'm going to lose it. Ask her if it's okay for you to help her feel better about herself. <laughs> Just put her arms around me. Mm-hmm. Good. Now, you're there to take care of her, so don't let her take care of you. Okay. Tap on her. Even though she was so sad, and she had to hide her feelings and all of who she was, she was still a great kid. She's smiling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask her what she needs to heal and feel better about herself. in the way. She doesn't want to be in the way. Mm, okay. So keep tapping on her. 
even though she thinks she was in the way. Even though she thinks she was in the way. She was a great kid. She was a great kid. And very helpful. And very helpful. Even though she thinks she was in the way. Even though she thinks she was in the way. She was a great kid. She was a great kid. And very helpful. And very helpful. Even though that wasn't her job. Even though that wasn't her job. One more time. Even though she felt she was in the way. She was a great kid. She was a great kid. And very helpful. And very helpful. Even though that wasn't her job. Even though that wasn't her job. Okay, tap on the top of her head. That wasn't her job. That wasn't her job. I inside the eyebrow. That wasn't her job. That wasn't her job. Outside the eyebrow. Her job was to be a great kid. Her job was to be a great kid. Under the eye. Her job was to be a great kid. Her job was to be a great kid. Under the nose. She was helpful. She was helpful. Chin point, but that wasn't her job. That wasn't her job. Collarbone point. She was just supposed to be a great kid. She was just supposed to be a great kid. She was a great kid. She was a great kid. Under the arm. She was a great kid. She was a great kid. What's she doing now? She's not crying. Okay. Okay, oh, ask her again. What, what else she needs to help her heal and feel like she deserves all the love there is in the world? She needs to have sick, the sickness out of the house. Mm-hmm. Okay. But how, ask her where she would like to go or what, what needs to happen. Let's take her to that place where the sickness is out of the house. Okay. So where, where does she want to go and who does she want to take with her? She just wants, she wants to be around people. Okay. People that have fun, people... where they're happy. Okay, so can you take her to that place? Any place? Any place, yeah. She can sit to the side. Okay. Look around, have her look around and really where she's at now, this place where there's people and there's no sickness around and have her really take it in in a, in a really vivid way, like what she, what does she see and what is she hearing? Is there any smells in the air or sounds? She smells cotton candy. Mm-hmm. She sees a beautiful merry-go-round mm-hmm. that she can get on and, and she can get off whenever she wants to. Mm-hmm. And all the horses are painted bright colors. Mm. And what does she want to do while she's there? Smile at all the people that are watching her go around. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's laughing, waving. Mm-hmm. Nice. And her her favorite people are on the merry-go-round with her and everybody's uh-huh. just laughing and having a good time. What else? The sun is shining. Uh-huh. I hear birds. I hear the calliope on the merry-go-round. I hear people talking. It, it's like it's like it's in a park. Uh huh. And all of, there's family there. There's friends there. Okay. How does she feel when she's there? Oh, light. Mm. Just just light, like a feather. No worries. Like, like, 
everything's under control. Mm-hmm. There's not chaos. There's a peace because the merry-go-round is the horse is going up and down and and up and down and around and it, it's all so smooth. There's no there's no noise from the merry-go-round except the calliope. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that feeling of peace, where do you feel it in your body? Where does she feel it in her body? It's starting with her toes. Okay. Only in her toes? It's like the stirrups of the horse that she's on. Uh-huh. And it, it is starting to tingle, and it just, it tickles. It tickles. And it's just, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It makes her giddy. Ah, okay. So I want you to imagine taking that feeling of tingling, peace, giddiness, and, br- and bringing it in through the top of your head and letting it spread down through every single cell in your body, healing anything that's that scared or hurt or feels unlovable, send it through every cell of the body, and then gather up a bunch of it and bring it right into your heart and just fill your heart with that feeling. Oh, my gosh. It just it it just filled up all the holes. Mm. Mm. Okay, now I got one more step. So when your heart is full with that feeling, imagine sending it out into the world, into the spirit, and just filling up the entire universe with it. Oh wow. Oh, my gosh. It just it just went out like like Tinkerbell on it just with her magic wand went whoosh. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> Isn't that oh, fun? Oh, my gosh. I think the person I was yesterday doesn't exist anymore. Wow. Oh, my. Let's try going back to the original picture. Okay. Of little Carol crying into her pillow and having been told to be quiet and behave herself and having to help. Are there any upset or negative feelings in in that picture anymore? No, because because even though they're, they're, I can hear them telling her that, Mm -hmm. she knows that it's not going to last forever. And she Uh can go back to the Uh merry-go-round. She's skipping in the bedroom. (laughs) (laughs) So the picture's different. Yeah. Uh huh. And she's not even on the bed. Uh huh. And the bed is made. The pillow is all tucked in under the covers. Uh huh. And it's it's light. There's light. The bedroom is bright. It's not dark in the cave anymore. Mhm. And how is she feeling about herself as she's skipping around the bedroom? Like she can do anything. Oh, my. And that little girl that was so full of love and life and joy and boisterousness, does she see any barriers right now? No. No? You don't sound so sure. I'm because looking. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, you're looking, okay. It's, she oh, my, that? I just, oh, this is cool. What? I just I just saw all the barriers in the form that were that used to be there. Mm-hmm. 
in the form of a bubble, and she's got a great big hat pin, and she's going around <laughs> boosting them. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's got a, oh, gosh, it's, it's about a foot long. All the bad things. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> oh, she's having fun. Uh-huh. That's fun. I gotta get me a hat pin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they disappeared. It's like they, when they popped, they went, they vanished. Say this out loud and see if you get any resonance, feelings, whatever. I have to earn love. I have to earn love. Hell no. I deserve love. I don't have to earn it. Oh, my gosh. Wow, what a switch. <laughs> I know I have to earn love. I don't have to earn love. Because I got it. I don't have to earn it. Yeah. It's already there. Already there. Oh, wow. It's already there. Oh, my gosh. It was there all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I think you just tapped the well. I think I just tapped the well. <laughs> All, all this crap gets in the way, and this is what's waiting for us? Oh, my gosh, Annette. What a revelation. How many years ago? How old were you as a little girl with that memory? Oh, my, I was about, I think I was five or six. Five or six. So this garbage is about, what, 58 years old? 58 years old. I don't have to earn love. It's already there. Oh, wow. i got to write that down. Because <laughs> <laughs> what you discover, and this is the whole point of this chapter in the book, is that when you take away the fear and you take away those barriers, you find that love is already there and lots of it. Amazing. Amazing. And we spend a lifetime hanging on to that crap. Mm-hmm. Right, because we don't know what to do about it. We, If we remember it or if we even think about it, we think about it in the same way, the same old painful way, and that reinforces those those pathways in our brains and, and the pain of it all. And when we bring EFT to it, it clears within, I think, within 10 minutes those old pathways start to die off when we're tapping and new ones start to form. Wow. So we, we, we literally rewire our brain when we're doing this stuff. It, I can't even... I can't even... I, I'm trying to remember being that little girl, and I, I don't. I don't remember even why she would be crying into the pillow. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Because now your past, your recollection of that past incident is different now. You've rewritten the past. Wow. Huh? You've rewritten the negative learning that you had about it. Mm-hmm. You've, now, you've now chosen... I discovered maybe, I don't know how conscious it is, but you've discovered that the love was there all along and that. Oh my gosh, I don't have to earn love. It's already there. Wow. So just like, this is going to be great, because just like the last time when you were starting to have epiphanies left and right, uh-huh. you know, I can't wait to see what's going to oh, happen. Oh man. 
<laughs> you mean it's going to be worse than that? <laughs> oh, I will be I worse, but crazier than that. Yeah, get ready. Get ready. Oh, I'll be texting you half the night probably. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I can't even feel myself. I'm just like. It's an altered state of consciousness. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? I, I experience it that way. It's like. I am not, like you said a minute ago, I am not the same person I was uh, half an hour ago. No. It's like there's no fear. Wow. Oh, wow. I can't even bring up negativity right now. Wow, it, it, it's, I, I don't know what. Oh, I feel like I'm on a three-day drunk. I just got to walk around and I'm going, holy cow, Carol. 